There he is in all his glory. I got him for one more day. We're out getting a hike. But anyway, I'm gonna make uh, watching the world burn, watching the world burn. June 7th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the number one topic I wanted to talk about today is the election coming up because I didn't know what the plan was. And, uh, you know, I watched, um, well, I, you know, if you watch Robert Barnes and Viva Fry, they did a special with Alex Jones. If you didn't know, there I've unleashed the legal system on him once again. It's lawfare. It's not anything uh, he, that they're saying he didn't fulfill the terms of his bankruptcy, which is bullcrap because he's got three lawyers looking into everything. And uh, it looks like the the judge in the case uh, is actually a good guy and is going to give him back his business on June 14th. So I know I got off the on a tangent, but uh, but I wanted to talk about what I learned because I've been sick for about two days. That's why I haven't made a, a video. In fact, I shouldn't be out here, but I had to get the dog some exercise. But anyway, let's talk about the election because I think we've lost already. Uh, and I didn't really understand what the whole plan was until I watched um, Our Country, Our Choice with Colonel Douglas McGregor. He had on a woman, I couldn't tell you her name, she's from True the Vote. And, uh, and then he also had a guy on that's running, I think it's Palm County, Florida. And he was talking about how, you know, the people that run the elections, they're all corrupt. They've been corrupted. And uh, and then how they're, how they're going to do it. So I was wondering how they were going to bring all the illegal aliens onto the rolls. Now... Before I get into that, I don't know if anybody's connected with the Trump campaign, and I don't know what the legalities would be, but he needs to spend money with these uh, organizations that are trying to fix the voter rolls and trying to fix, um, the, you know, true the vote. So that would be a great organization to, to, to give to, but I don't think it's going to be possible to fix this. So what the Biden administration has done, and I didn't understand this, but... They went down to the Darien Gap. If you're not familiar with the Darien Gap, it's just north of Panama. And, uh, and that's where pretty much all the illegals congregate to get on buses. And then they're bused by the, by the Democrats to the United States uh, and brought into the country. So what they're doing is they're giving them an uh, app. Well, giving them cell phones with an app on it. And then they're also uh, giving them directions on how... When they get here, and I didn't realize the laws had changed, and this is the rhinos and the Democrats, we changed the social security registration. And so what they got to do with the app is once they get here, they got to apply uh, with social security uh, and get a four digit number. And that four digit number is going to count as a social security number uh, for them to vote. So in Texas alone, you're going to have, and by the way, Greg Abbott, let me talk about him for two seconds. He's a, he's a Democrat. He's not even a rhino. He's a Diablo. And uh, he's, he's going to turn, I mean, and this is why I say we're going to lose the election. He's going to turn Texas Democrat. Because what you're going to have in Texas is 1.4 million illegal immigrants voting in the election. Uh, if all of them vote the way, because and also the, they tell them in the Darien Gap, vote for Biden. Here's the way you do it. You know, here's the number you need to get from Social Security. And, and then you say, well, what about voter ID? Or what about signature matching? Well, these ballots, if you're going to do ballot harvesting, you can't even count the ballots. So even here in Florida, I mean, he was the guy that was talking about the elections in uh, Palm County. He was explaining that a Haitian came up to him in the last election and asked for $85,000. And he said he would get him the entire Haitian vote. And, uh, and he said, no, I'm not going to pay you $85,000. Well, so then he went to the Democrat, and of course the Democrat gave him 85000 <laughs> And he said the entire Haitian uh, population in Palm County voted for the Democrat for that 85000 So you could see how cheap uh, votes are bought. But with you, when you got 1.4 million illegal immigrants that, uh, that Greg Abbott has engineered, and by the way, you know Greg Abbott could have secured that border anytime he wanted. He's been playing the game on, on X, you know, talking about how he's doing things to secure the border. I don't know if you knew, but when he sent the National Guard down there, they were on a, just a small section of the fence. And even that got overrun. <laughs> if you ever saw the pictures of it, when the illegal immigrants just pushed right through the National Guard troops because they're not allowed to fi fire on them. You know, what are they going to do? Kill all the illegal immigrants and start? A, I mean, my God, the Democrats would, would throw every National Guard member in jail because Greg Abbott's a Democrat. Remember? Uh, a lot of the um, Republicans in the Democrat, I mean, in the Texas legislature are Democrats. 
So I think that Texas, and that's all they need. I think Texas is going blue. I really do. And even here in Florida, we have about, uh, I think he said it was uh, 300,000 illegal immigrants. I don't, it might have been more than that. It might have been up towards, I don't think it was a million. I think it was just 300,000, which is shocking because I thought we were doing a good job of keeping the illegal immigrants out of Florida. But what he was saying is they also can use the Social Security database to vote here in Florida. So you're asking, uh, okay, you're telling me all this, uh, that cybersecurity guy, but what can I do about it? Well, the guy that was on uh, Our Country, Our Choice, I encourage you to watch that video. He had a great suggestion. And I was like, son of a gun, that would work. It wouldn't work in Texas because Abbott's a Democrat. But in some of the Republican states, this could work. And uh, so what I'm going to do is, what you got to do is, is send an email or write a letter to your governor. Okay, if governors have the power to lock down their states, especially, uh, you know, uh, Democrat governors, but like I said, the Democrats don't want to clean up the voter rolls and they want the illegal immigrants voting Democrat. But anyway, um, send a letter or an email to your governor and say, look, purge all the registration databases. Purge them all. Okay, if we purge them all, because that's what's happening when they get that four digit number, they're registered in the voting uh, databases so that when those ballots come in, um, and, and by the way, he was talking about that they can get up to three ballots, each illegal immigrant here in Florida. And so they're going to be voting three times. So they could actually turn Florida blue. But uh, anyway, so write your governor and say, look, purge all the databases and everybody in the state has to re-register before 2024. He says, that's the only way you clean up the voter rolls. And I, you know what? I thought it was brilliant. I mean, how else are you going to do it? Yeah, you can go in and look at the voting rolls and get all the dead people off of it. How are you going to get all the illegal immigrants out of the databases? I mean, there's no way now. you got uh, almost 12 million in the country, so they're all registered to vote. Uh, you know, so how are you going to get them out of the database? Uh, how are you going to get, um, you know, all of the uh, people that are in nursing homes that can't, you know, can't even get up, that the Democrats go in and solicit their votes? you know, out of the database. I mean, there's just so many examples of no way you clean up the voter rolls and that really would work. So I'm going to send your, your governor, put pressure on them. I mean, if they can lock you down for COVID, they have the ability to say purge. And he's a cybersecurity expert like I am. And it was a brilliant idea. He says, purge all the databases, make everybody re-register, you know, Democrat and Republican and do it by uh, the 24th. And that's very feasible. Yeah, if, you, if you're not willing to go register to vote, you don't really deserve to be voting, do you? I mean, you know, that's uh, that's my philosophy. All right, so that's a, that's enough on uh, voting. Uh, one one other thing I wanted to get back to on the illegal immigration, and this is why I say all Democrats are satanic and evil. Uh, he was there's a documentary coming out in September. This was on Redacted, and they were interviewing the guy. He's working up the documentary. And he's been traveling the country, and what he's found is the uh, the child trafficking in the United States is just horrendous. And there are these huge warehouses where they're putting all the children before they send them out to wherever. And he said the people that are picking up the children, or that we're giving them to, we don't know anything about. So that could be somebody, you know, he pointed out, when you get a kid, you can sell that kid 30, 40, 50 times before they die, right? That's a hell of a lot of money. That's a very profitable industry. So, you know, you can sell that to a pedophile and make a ton of money. Whereas if you buy uh, drugs, you only get to sell it one time. So, you know, if you, and by the way, that's another thing. This is why I say Democrats are evil. They're all for uh, illegal immigration. I don't even understand it. If, the, if you're for illegal immigration, and by the way, that doesn't include the women. The women are also being trafficked into these brothels all across the United States. A lot of them very young, maybe not children, maybe just teenagers, uh, definitely below the consenting age. And the Democrats are all for that. They love seeing women raped and they love seeing kids raped. They're all pedophiles. So that's uh, that's where that stands. And you won't hear a Democrat anywhere say that we need to stop this. In fact, there was a Democrat um, um, lawmaker and she was talking about Joe Biden's uh, bill to shut down the border, which is, isn't a bill to shut down the border. It doesn't do a damn thing about the border. It's just all lip service to, for the Democrats to believe that he's actually doing something. He ain't doing anything. But, uh, but anyway, so if you have a Democrat friend, remember, they're for pedophilia. They're for the rape of women. They're for the fentanyl killing 100,000 Americans a year. These are not good people, man. I'm just saying. Just saying.
So there's two other things about the illegal immigration that I've been thinking about and I want you to think about because what, you know, after the election, once the Democrats get elected again, because you know Joe Biden ain't running, they're going to they're gonna put Gavin Newsom or uh, probably uh, Michelle Obama in, in a place and the Democrats are going to go, yay, we've been saved, we've been saved. And with all those illegal immigrants voting, plus uh, a lot more Democrats that aren't, aren't polling well for Biden, uh, that'll get them over the top as far as the election goes, no matter what Trump does, unless Trump cleans up the, the voting rolls. Uh, he's got a war chest of almost half a billion dollars. I don't see why he can't spend some of that money and clean up. Well, he might just be able to clean up the voting rolls, but he could also get the message out that we need to purge those databases and re-register. So that's a that's a possibility. But uh, so I wanted to get to the aftermath. So you know that right now the, the Democrats, the evil Democrats, they're paying to put all of the illegal immigrants in hotels, uh, they're giving them money. They're giving them ten thousand dollars when they get to New York City. They're uh, paying uh, paying for their food. Uh, they're taking really good care of them. I mean, when you think about it, wouldn't you come here for a six month vacation or a year long vacation where everything's paid for by the U.S. government? I mean, that's why all these people are coming in. But what's the plan after the election? They can't afford to keep paying all these illegal immigrants. I mean, because that's just buying their votes. You have to understand, these people are not, a lot of them are not very intelligent. Most of them, some of them are criminals. Some of them uh, are uneducated. They don't they, they don't think long term. They're just thinking, well, we got everything paid for. We're living in a hotel room. Uh, you know, this isn't a bad life compared to where we came from. Well, when that dries up after November 5th, you're going to have a lot of chaos in the United States. And what's the purpose of that chaos? I think it's going to be to declare martial law so that the Democrats will be an authoritarian government in total control of the United States. That's just my opinion, because what else are you going to do with the immigrants? So we're going to have, we would have war on the streets. The immigrants, 10, about 12 million immigrants against the uh, Americans, uh, especially in the inner cities. I mean, we're going to see cities burning down and everything. And boy, that gives the uh, federal government the ability to declare martial law, bring in the military, and basically shut down the United States and they, they'll establish their authoritarian rule. That's just my prediction for what takes place after the election once the Democrats have been elected. So I forgot uh, two other things. <laughs> there was one more on the voting. Uh, so really, I mean, I, if Texas goes blue, we're done. You know, no, no Republican. And, and, that's, and that's the thing. You know, you say, well, why would the Republicans want this? They're not Republicans. They're Dem oh, it's a Democrat. So, uh, but I did want to talk just briefly about Russia. You know, if we hit them with attack them, Russia could hit back. Now, Alex Jones, I tell you what, a lot of people don't like him, but he's uh, he's always been right about just about everything, you know, and uh, he's, uh, he's spot on. I mean, in fact, he was talking about silver uh, years ago, years ago, and how it's, uh, how it, you know, it's manipulated. And, uh, he was, he was way ahead of his time. We're going to get into that topic for this video. But uh, anyway, uh, actually, let's get into that right now. So you know that for every ounce of silver, there's like uh, 16 or 100 uh, contracts uh, that uh, are for that silver. And so when you short it, okay, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, but that, that one coin represents 16, maybe 100 investments, okay? Now, what happens when you take physical delivery of the silver, okay? Well, those contracts have to be filled. And if there's no silver there, then you gotta pay in cash. And so that's what they're saying. He's, he was pointing out, and Alex Jones wasn't, it was somebody else. Uh, they was pointing out that uh, that could wipe out the, um, the, the banks if they have to cover all those. In fact, they were just in Shanghai. So if you didn't know right now, silver is selling for, well, about 31. But in Shanghai, it's $4 above that. So if you're a whale, or if you're going to travel to Shanghai, let's say, for example, you could take 10,000, you could buy silver at $31 an ounce, get on the plane, take it with you to Shanghai, and sell it for $34 an ounce. So it's called repatriation. So that's a hell of a deal. You're, going to, you're making, I don't even know what percentage that is. That's a hell of a lot of money. And that's exactly what the uh, Chinese and uh, everybody, India and everybody's doing, is they're buying the gold off of the, um, the Western exchanges. I mean, gold and silver, most, mostly silver. And they're repatriating it on the Shanghai exchange. All right, let's talk about silver for just one more second. 
So like I told you, they're repatriated on the Shanghai Exchange. And Andy Sheckman said that, that the uh, bankers went over and, and tried to buy some silver off of the Shanghai Exchange. Well, if they did that, you know, there was a quid pro quo there. Because <laughs> it costs $4 more an ounce on the Shanghai Exchange. And what good's it going to do? And then the Shanghai will just take it back off the coma and take it a discount. So I'm not sure what Andy was talking about there. That doesn't seem like it would work from to me, but you tell me. So let's talk about the Russian war for one second. Uh, you know that we said we're going to hit them with the Takums. That's a that's an American uh, programmed missile. No way the Ukrainians can launch it without a team of uh, U.S. troops on the ground, or uh, making a load package through the satellites and uh, the drones, and loading that into the missile. And of course, a Ukrainian will push the button, but that don't mean anything. So uh, once you hit start hitting, you got to realize even during the uh, the Cold War, we never hit the mainland Russia, and Russia never hit mainland United States. Now, there's two other things that you might not know about. Putin said what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So they're sending weapons, just like the United States is sending weapons to Ukraine, Russia's sending weapons to, the, um, to their proxies. So I don't know if you knew, but I saw a picture. I don't know if it's true. A lot of this stuff's AI generated. But it looked like an aircraft, a U.S. aircraft carrier had already been hit by something that the Houthis had. That's what was reported on X. But can you imagine if the uh, Houthis get uh, Russian weapons? Those ships aren't going to be safe in the Red Sea. No way, no how. And then if we arm up uh, the Iranians even more than what they already are uh, with Russian weapons, that's going to be something else. And then if you arm up Hezbollah with Russian weapons, so you see where this is hidden. We're on our way to global thermal nuclear war. And by the way, Alex Jones made a good point. He said, you just can't launch a tactical nuke and not have all-out nuclear war. That's just not going to happen. I heard that the Russians, you know, the, the one over here, Shima, was like 20 megatons or 22 megatons. And then, uh, but the tactical nukes the Russians have are 75 megatons. That'll just wipe out everything around them. And he said that every scenario that's been painted by the RAND Corporation or by any anybody anywhere means that as soon as the first nuke flies, that's the end of the world. China hits India, India hits China, because, you know, use them or lose them. Russia hits the United States. Europe Europe goes away. Europe hits Russia. We're looking at the end of civilization. I can't believe these globalist lunatics like Lindsey Graham want to end the world. But, you know, somebody pointed out that a lot of the, uh, the big fish, the whales, are building these huge bunkers. My question to them is, how are you going to get to the bunker? Because you, you only got a few minutes once those nukes start flying. I don't think, sometimes you might not get very much warning. So are, are they going to live in the bunkers most of the time and just come out occasionally? I guess that you could do that. Uh, but they're, they're building these huge bunkers, and I guess they think that, you know, because the U.S. scenario is that 20% of the population might survive. Uh, of course, then you got to get through the nuclear winter, starvation, and everything else. So I'm, I'm not even sure how much. So you might have only 5% of the United States left after a nuclear war. Well, what kind of world is that to live in? I don't understand the globalists. Maybe you can explain it to me. The evil Democrats. This is what the evil Democrats want. They're satanic, man. They want the end of the world. Otherwise, the Democrats wouldn't be launching attackums into Russia. You know, when you're hitting inside Russia, what do you think Russia's going to do? So now they're escalating, and it's just going to keep going if, as long as the Democrats are in power. It's terrible. Oh, the other thing I forgot. <laughs> I don't think I mentioned it was uh, Russia sending, I think it's just four ships, well, three ships and one submarine, none of them nuclear, down to do uh, military exercises off the coast of Cuba. You realize we haven't seen Russian ships off the coast of Cuba since 1963? You getting a little frightened yet? I know I am. So I wanted to get this on the video. That little dog will not walk on the way out on the hike, but you can see he's like a sled dog on the way back. Now this is, I forgot his dog on collar. And normally I would never do this because he, if he sees a deer or something, he's off to the races. But I want him to get his exercise because he goes back to the ex-wife tomorrow. And uh, she doesn't exercise him enough, so I'm willing to take the risk even though I forgot his collar. As long as I stay somewhat close to him, hopefully I'll get him back if he takes off into the forest. So here's one other thing that I thought about. <laughs> Was because the Democrats are going to be harvesting all those votes from the illegal immigrants and uh, if you're well if you're an illegal alien or even a legal alien here in the United States illegal immigrant I should say uh, and you know some illegal immigrants maybe you could uh, harvest those ballots from them 
and put them in for uh, Trump. You know why not? Uh, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't do what the Democrats are doing, which is pay those immigrants money unless you come up with an innovative scheme. Because I imagine they sell those votes rather easily. You know, so I'm not suggesting that. I don't want you to go to jail. But that's what the Democrats are going to do. The problem is we got a two-tiered justice system. Democrats won't go to jail for paying illegal immigrants to vote a certain way. You, as a Republican, you will go to jail. So, yeah, anyway, that's kind of fighting fire with fire, isn't it? You know, go out, see how many illegal immigrant ballots you can harvest and get them to check the Trump box rather than the Biden box. Well, like I said, Biden won't be on the ballot anyway. Check the Gavin Newsom box or check the Trump box rather than the Gavin Newsom box. All right. So I wanted to <clears throat> continue with today's watching the word world burn video. Um, two other things I wanted you to consider is the there's the nuclear option too as far as the illegal aliens go. Biden or whoever's in office by that time uh, could, you know, let's say November 1st, sign an executive order granting the uh, illegal immigrants uh, the right or citizenship and the right to vote. Now that would be the nuclear option. Of course that would get contested in the courts. But then, you know, once the election happens and uh, the Democrats are in power, you know, what court are you going to go to to argue against that? Right? And as long as the military is on the side of the Democrats, you're screwed, man. And that's where they are. The Pentagon is all for the Democrat plan. And then I heard uh, Andy Sheckman, he was talking tonight. He was pointing out, because I was saying, okay, they're paying the illegal immigrants a ton of money up until the election. So that's buying all their votes. And I explained how that's going to work. But then after that, you know, once the Democrats are in power, he says, we're going to grant them universal basic income. And of course, no Republican would ever win ever again. <laughs> no way, no how. Or no, uh, no MAGA person would ever win. Rhinos would get in there. So you can see, you know, and then, but the thing is, they don't understand that's not going to work. You know, right now, China, China had like, I want to say $4 trillion, $6 trillion in treasuries. And they're down to like $600 billion right now. So they've sold off a hell of a lot. There's another article that Saudi Arabia is no longer going to deal in dollars for oil. So that's another huge blow to the dollar. So yeah, the Democrats can grant universal basic income to all these illegal immigrants. But when your money's worthless, <laughs> what good is that going to do? And of course, that's going to erupt the entire United States into chaos. But let's just continue with the news real quick. I don't want to get too long-winded on this video. So you know that the uh, this was uh, Megatron. And uh, so Putin restarted the Cuban crisis and Biden managed to drag the Soviet Union back to the doorstep of the United States. And I already talked about that. They're sending, sending ships down here. Putin, I was right. He says Putin is sending four Russian warships, including a nuclear submarine, to Cuba next week. The Cuban government also confirmed... Also confirmed, Russia has given the U.S. a taste of its own medicine. The U.S. escalates in Taiwan. China will follow. There will be a whole armada of warships and submarines near Miami. I don't like that. I live here in Florida. Uh, I already told you, breaking, uh, this is our country, our choice. Uh, in response to Ukraine using American-made weapons to bomb Russia, Russia will be sending combat vessels. Yeah, I already told you about that. Uh, okay, today... An attack from Iskander-M, O-T-R-K, launched from Crimea, killed 11 NATO officers in Odessa. It was called it called in the messages, thundered into the Zatoka area. Nine Czechs and two Britons, by the way, all instructors from NATO countries, are not going exactly where they think. Military experts arrived to support the engineering troops and to organize logistics activities in the Kyrgyzstan and Nick. Kolakeski regions. Britain arrived for a missile rotation in Migoron. Two senior officials would formulate the detail of the flight missions for the Storm Shadow and Scout missiles. The attack hit a building near the port of Odessa near the ship repair yard where a performance of newly arrived officers was taking place. Now they will appear before heaven. <laughs> I, I hate to laugh, but you know, do you think that if we send NATO people there to, to put in the, the flight packages for the Storm Shadow and the, uh, the Attackums, that that's not a direct threat to Russia and they're programmed to hit inside Russia? This is lunacy, man. The Democrats have lost their freaking minds. Um, oh, I wanted to get into uh, just this right here. 
this was crazy. So I was talking about human trafficking. So here's just some news uh, that you can just run, just search on U.S. human trafficking. I, I had some good articles on another browser, but I'll just read you a couple of these. These are just headlines. That will be his legacy. Colorado man sentenced to 448 years in prison in human trafficking case. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to read the whole headline. Four human trafficking suspects arrested in Mont Monterey County. Two juvenile victims saved. I mean, can you imagine two out of hundreds of thousands? I mean, I, you know, what's the point? Uh, in, in Monterey County. Okay, so that's, let's go back. Human trafficking, a hidden crisis affecting Georgia's youth. So you can see this is throughout the United States. FBI, Department of Homeland Security, warned of human traffic around Omaha during College World Series. Human traffic and awareness training turns attendees into advocates while teaching safety procedures. Human traffic advocates, Democrats, insist exploited children shouldn't be treated like criminals. <laughs> yeah, because they want to screw, they want a pedophile with them, man. That's what the Democrats want. They want to get in there and woo, mess around. All right, so that's just a few things about human traffic, and I thought you might be interested in that. Uh, Dmitry Medenev, Medenev, pointed out that Putin yesterday for the first time allowed Russian weapons to be sent to regions at war with the uh, states supplying arms to Ukraine. I told you about that already. The last days, farmers shut down the French and Spanish border and held a massive protest outside the EU. As usual, you heard nothing about this on the mainstream media. Raise your hand if you support the farmers. I certainly do. This was a comment that a lot of people put up. I thought Robert F. Kennedy, if you know, and then he puts, he, I, I'm not going to vote for him. I'm voting for Trump, but I'll read what you, he had to say because it's very good. My father, Robert F. Kennedy, was assassinated 56 years ago today. The day he died, he won both the California primary and the South Dakota primary, solidifying his insurgent candidacy as the Democrat nominee for president. Most are my heart today as I consider the deep-seated divisiveness that plagues our nation. In fact, that my father succeeded in uniting America, I think we should be proud to know that I plan to do the same. So you may want to give Robert F. Kennedy your, your vote. Aye. Then, of course, this was Scott Ritter, and he went into uh, Operation Overlord, there's a lot of uh, videos about that. I'm not going to talk about D-Day, but just understand it happened yesterday. And the worst thing that I saw was Zelensky hugging a World War II veteran. We had a Nazi hugging a world, 100-year-old World War II veteran. That's the craziest thing I ever saw. I, I, I'm sure the, the old guy didn't know that Zelensky's a Nazi. But, you know, that's just me. I don't know. Crazy world we live in, isn't it? Great speech. Listen, the Prime Minister of Slovakia is back at work after surviving being shot multiple times, five times, actually, in an assassination attempt. Well, I'm glad to see him back. I can't believe he recovered that quickly from five shots. Boy, the NATO tried to take him out, didn't they? Uh, this is so crazy to watch it all happen again. What is the next move that Biden will announce with the CDC and the FDA? Lockdowns, masks, social distancing. They're talking about the bird flu. You know what? There was a, there was a virologist on... Um, redacted and she was talking about you know the way you handle these viruses is you don't treat them with vaccines and everything you let the virus run its course and then you establish natural herd immunity and we heard about all that back during covid but the democrats wouldn't listen they were forcing people to get shots the booster to your booster to your booster to your booster the democrats wanted everybody to get shot luckily i didn't go for it all right breaking german right-wing politician heinrich kosch has been stabbed multiple times by a far-left uh, Antifa extremist. Will this be reported in the news? I doubt it. <clears throat> Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov referred to the United States as an enemy while speaking to reporters on Tuesday. Things are escalating rapidly. I couldn't agree more. Douglas McGregor, uh, breaking. U.S. Recurring uses U.S. weapons to strike inside Russia with guidance approved by the Biden administration. Breaking. Putin plans to deliver arms. Okay, we already know about that. Let's keep going. Yesterday, Israel said that they were moving towards the decision to invade Lebanon. Today, Hezbollah fired a rocket at their base, killing and injuring dozens of soldiers. Meanwhile, the leader of Hezbollah, uh, Naz, Nasrallah, said, You want war? Bring it on. Hezbollah has been re realizing the weakness of the IDF which after seven months almost did not achieve any significant success against the poorly armed Hamas, which is still standing firm and is now provoking Israel to invade Lebanon. 
They literally want the invasion. If you remember, well, that's the Zionists. The Zionists want the Arabs dead. I'm surprised the Arabs put up with this. If you remember that at the beginning of this war, I wrote that the first phase of the task of Hamas is to sacrifice and cripple the army of Israel as much as possible until the second phase of the war with Hezbollah begins. Hamas has exceeded all possible expectations and not only crippled the IDF, but is also standing firm. An invasion of Levantine will be ten times more deadly than Gaza. Now, that's what Douglas McGregor's been saying, and that's what Scott ruder has been saying. I don't know. I just, you know, I just follow people. Hezbollah has a military experienced army of over 100,000. Plenty of weapons and supply routes through Syria. That will also serve to reinforce the Houthi personnel. The invasion of Lebanon will be all or nothing for Israel, which is why I think there are high chances it will not happen, but Israel will accept a ceasefire with Hamas. I don't know, he's speculating at this point, so I'm not going to read that. There are seven Republic senators that joined Democrats in confirming the Biden judicial nominee. Senator Susan Collins, Senator Lindsey Graham, that doesn't surprise me. South Carolina, get rid of that lunatic, man. Uh, Senator James Langford, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Senator Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney's gone anyway, so thank God for that. Senator Mike Rounds and Senator Tom Tillis. All right, that's it. I'll peace out, stay free. If I think of that last thing I was thinking of, I'll get, get one more one more clip on the video. So I, re I remembered what it was. Let's, uh, if the Democrats can get just 3%, just 3% of the illegal immigrants to fight for them, and if the Pentagon weapons them up, that's 500,000 men. That's a hell of an army inside the United States, and they're all fighting age. A lot of Chinese from about 100, over 100 nations all around the world. So we could be in for a world of hurt once the Democrats weapon up their army. We'll see what happens. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.